you've heard the you've heard the term i'm sure systemic racism sure. uh, describe what you know what, what does that mean to you when you hear that term uh, when i hear that term i think of a system within a country that is pervasive in politics, business, education, every arena of human activity, entertainment, media, sports, where there is a fabric that has been, or a part of the fabric of this country has been woven in a class type of system. And so that's what creates the system. So it's not a person, it is a, system that favors one type of person over another. And I mentioned earlier, whether it's rich over poor, uh, uh, male over female, white over black, it manifests so many different ways. And that system, I believe, <clears throat> comes out in the workplace, comes out in even home lending, comes out in uh, education, op educational opportunities, comes out in uh, the media pitting people against one against another, but also that media outlets, donors and benefactors who they, who they uh, uh, may be beholden to. So it's, 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 I guess I can almost use the term dog eat dog. And if you happen to be the small dog on the porch, you get eaten. With all the, and we kind of already talked a little bit about it, but you know, all the, uh, everything that's going on, the, one of the terms that we continue to hear come up is uh, systemic racism. So what do you think about when you hear that term, systemic racism? Uh. I haven't thought about it. What, when you say that, what do you mean by that? I guess I'm. Well, that's, that's a term that I hear uh, over and over that, that the system, uh, the system is designed to oppress uh, minorities and, and, and that type of stuff that it's designed specifically to, uh, to elevate one race or culture and, and over another. Uh, yeah. You know, do I see that? I mean, maybe in, in my bubble, in my world, I don't see that, but that don't mean it's not true. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't see it, but I'm not living either, you know. I, I don't mean to say I'm probably in a bubble, but we are. You're probably in a bubble. I am too, but but uh, from where I'm at, I, I don't see it, but that don't mean it's not there, though. Makes sense. It does, and, and, and I believe you've seen that with the, the young black men and women probably went in the 70s, late 70s when I went to school, and and probably through the 80s too, but I do see that changing though, tremendously yep. for the, the, the uh, for uh, black Americans. I, I, I see opportunities to me greater today for them than there's ever been, you know. Uh, I c could be wrong, I may be ignorant there, I, I don't think so. And I, I was listening to, a, 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 he's a professor, a man named Shelby Steele, uh, and he was talking about this. He was being interviewed and he came up through segregation. He said, I, I made it. I went through it. I suffered through it, felt the pains of it. But he said every decade for me as a black American has gotten better and more opportunities for us today as a black American than there's ever been before in, in my lifetime. And he said for any of any of these kids' lifetime, it's a, it's a greater opportunity for success for the black community. And I see that, and, and, and he was a black man that, that was expressing that, and, uh, and he was a professor too, and that kind of, 
I'm not used to college professors saying something like that either, you know, so. Uh, uh, so you've probably heard the term um, systemic racism. Right. That seems to be uh, there for a while. Every time you turned on the news, that, that term was coming up. So what, what do you think about, what does that term mean to you? For me, uh, systemic racism is the idea that our system of justice and equality has always left the black men as less than being equal or being part of what is called justice. And, and the system that's being used works well for those I guess it was designed to work for. Um, and those who it wasn't designed to work for feel the brunt and the oppression from not being fully allowed to get the benefits of the system that works. Uh, so um, I, I think systemic racism, if you, if you want to cover it up, is anybody who doesn't believe that everybody is supposed to have the same equal treatment as a participant in government and, and as a benefactor of what government has to offer. So systemic racism is just the idea that some people ought to be allowed to have something that other people are not allowed to have. Um, that's my interpretation of systemic racism. Okay. Um, you know, the idea of I guess if you want to put it in political terminology or, or historical context, uh, the idea of separate but equal, um, I think is where the idea of systemic racism has its foundation because you know if it was separate, um, the equal parts very seldom went along with the separate. Right. Um, so to me, the term systemic racism is the idea that as the system of politics was set up, it was set up in ways that it kept blacks disenfranchised and not being allowed to fully participate in the benefits of being part of a free society. All right. So um, let's see, we were talking about uh, so systematic racism. So what, what does that term mean to you? Uh, the meaning overall is just not being granted opportunities to thrive, essentially. Like we could talk from school systems to housing, not uh, property taxes, not being able to buy in certain areas. Um, that's, that's such a broad, I don't say it's broad, it's, it's it will be so much to cover. Uh, I really think the best way to explain it would be just be not being, not being, uh, not having access to the things that will help uh, us as a people prosper. Does, uh, does that kind of answer the question, or you need me to go a little yeah, bit deeper? Yeah, no, yeah, it's uh, you know the question is about what it means to you. So there's no wrong answer. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So, when you hear the word or the term systemic racism, what does that what does that mean to you? What do you think about when you hear that? To me, I think about um, to me, I think about the housing market um, in particular. <laughs> um, but it, it's like you know, systemic racism. I think of like people um, purposefully keep using certain systems, systemic racism, to keep down other people. So I think of the, the housing market, especially in, uh, when it comes to, when it comes to um, uh, zoning in like cities like New York, for example, it's a city like New York, states like New York, like in the boroughs, um, where some areas are kind of run down and, and um, not how they probably could have been if they were, um, zoned for at the time for white people um, there were areas that were left off um, there are areas that were um, not suited not suited 
for black people to for black people to live in so they're kind of pushed off to other areas that were like less desirable um which created the hoods and the ghettos and um all that of today so that's the first thing that comes to mind there's a lot of there's a lot of other stuff but that's the very first thing is just how housing um wasn't fair to black people at the time um, so one of the things that um with all the all the different protests and uh, and the different things that have been going on is is the word systemic or the term systemic racism keeps coming up. So what what are your thoughts on that? What do you what do you think about when you hear that term? Yeah, um, obviously that's not an easy conversation, and it's a difficult, it's complex, and I don't want to waltz right into it as if I understand it completely. When I hear the term systemic racism, um, I hear and I see um, a, a system, wh whatever the system may be. I think right now we're hearing that term describe, describing the United States, specifically the police, law enforcement, um, whatever the powers at be, you know, uh, that were, that term is describing those forces that are systemically or believed to systemically oppose someone because of the color of their skin, because of their race. And that plays out in a myriad of ways. And this is something real quick. I, don't, I hope this furthers the answer, but to me, racism is so much more than, than acting hatefully or being violent. Like it, Racism is, at its core, holding one race superior to another race, or multiple races being inferior and one race being superior. We can identify it that way, but it, you, can, you can believe inherently that a race that you or, or your race is superior to another and never act out on, never, never aggressively act out, never be violent towards somebody, but in, in your undertones, in the way that you talk to them, in the way that you treat them, in the way that you, you know, operate in the world, I believe you can still be a racist in this sort of silent and, and also deadly form. Um, systemically, that presents a problem if, if we do truly have these, these systems of, of corrupt, you know, hatred towards one race or multiple races and um, w when I hear people cry out against systemic racism, I'm hearing them say, we don't feel safe. We don't feel uh, looked at. We don't feel heard. We don't feel accounted for. We feel opposed and we don't know how we're going to make it out of this unless systemically we see change. Um, for me, I haven't experienced having to drive a car down the down the road at 10 o'clock at night and be worried about being pulled over i've never been worried about that i've never had to in fact i got in some trouble with when i was in uh high school that my senior year of high school uh we got pulled over and i got accused of something that i wasn't doing they, they said i was drinking i wasn't drinking and i um, started arguing with the cop and i got in deeper trouble because i was arguing with her but I never had a fear for her, like having any sort of, you know, acting out in violence or pulling a gun on me, or I didn't have, I was casual in my argument with her, which is absolutely absurd. I should have never done that. Right. But I have brothers and sisters who have come to me in this season and said, I don't know, I don't, I haven't been leaving the house after dark because I don't know if I'm gonna come home if I get pulled over. And so I, I'm, I'm hearing that and I'm, doing my best to empathize with that from a place of not, I, I can't, I have never experienced it. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm, I, I want to learn from that perspective. And I've seen even, I mean, we can't deny what we've seen uh, in these video clips and different things of people losing their lives on the streets. And so ultimately for me, there, when we cry out for, for help, when, when specifically when, when our black brothers and sisters cry out for help when it comes to these acts of hatred 
um, perpetuated by the higher powers that, you know, around us. There's a lot of pathways towards solutions. And for me, I've seen the political system go really south really quick. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen the behind the scenes conversations. I know that this is, whether we like it or not, our political system, we talk about systems in our country, it, it's made up of people and it's flawed and it's broken. And in so many ways it's corrupt. And so not to say there aren't good people in, in the political world, in, in office, not to say there aren't good. I, I have many friends in the police force and in law enforcement across the board that are great people that stand up for, for all people that are, you know, interested in preserving life and helping people thrive. I, there are good people. Uh, all that being said, we can, we can attack the system that we know is flawed, that we know is made up of people and we can tear it all down and we could still be left with no solution. I don't believe that, you know, and, and I don't, I don't know, I don't want to cross any lines, but the, the kind of the cancel movement of let's cancel culture, let's cancel, let's defund the police, let's defund this, let's, let's cancel it all, let's burn it down, let's start it over. As, as idealistic and maybe as excited as, you, as somebody may be about that, it's not going to solve the problem because the problem is deeper than that. The problem, it, yes, I see a systemic problem. But that systemic problem is a fruit of a heart problem that we all have to address individually. How do we see each other? How do we treat each other? Do we believe that everyone has intrinsic value? Do we believe that everyone was created for a purpose and in the image of God? You may not believe in God. You may not believe in the Bible. But how do you see people? Do you believe that they're valuable? Do you believe that, that what's inside of them is more important than what's on the outside of them? Um, we have a deeper issue that is at work here. One of my mentors says that he, did, this is a black man from Chicago, grew up in segregated Chicago, and he tells me all the time, he says, I don't believe that a country can rise above the spiritual condition that it maintains. And so this is a spiritual problem. And you may not believe in the same solution that I believe in, and I'd love to have a whoever I'm talking to, I know I'm talking to Scott who does, but whoever else I'm talking to, you may not believe in the same solution, but I'd love to have a conversation about that because I truly believe that this is a heart problem and our, by nature, we are sinful people. By nature, we are flawed and it's not going to be solved by dealing with systematic reform if we don't have a heart change, if we can't see people for who they are and how they were created. I think that's, uh, you're right, I do agree with you. So, I think you've already kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, so, what do you think about when you hear the term systematic racism? I, I, I think that, that, that the pro, a pro, a, 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 their progress is in place to keep you in a certain demographic your whole life to keep you in a certain living in a certain area of town, to keep you earning a certain amount of money. That's what that is. So do you feel like that that has impacted you personally? Uh, when I look back on certain things, like when I first got out of the military and I was looking for a job, and I, I, I I went to this one place in Columbus and, and the lady said, oh yes, we're hiring. And she went back there and, and, and told the terminal manager and he said, no, we're not hiring. And she told, uh, we're not hiring and sent me away. Didn't even, didn't even bother. So you assume that that's racism? Yes, it is, because you know why? Because they were hiring and there were no black drivers there. Okay. 
I mean, I wasn't there, so I can't know. No, 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 this is normal. I'm, I'm supposed to live like this. I'm supposed, I'm supposed to make, I'm supposed to have this good job and this nice house and this nice community. And my kids are supposed to go to a good school. And I'm supposed to have all this. It, it's, 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 I don't know, I feel like it's your birthright. So it's hard for white people to grasp the concept of white privilege. But it is there. It is real. We believe it. Some of y'all believe it too. But that was what I said, oh, I worked hard to get what I got. Yeah, you did work hard, but somebody gave you the shot and somebody allowed you to stay there and develop. So I got a few more specific questions. So uh, okay. systemic racism, mm -hmm. um, what, what does that mean to you? What, do you? what do you think about when you hear that term? Systemic racism, it means that it's not just that. It's not just that. It may also be that, but it's not just that humans or the people are, or Caucasians, you know, it's not just that people are racist. It's that the system itself is racist. It was bred that way. It was, it was initiated that way. It was uh, wired that way. And so what happens is that it's not that people walk around saying, I'm going to do you wrong. I'm going to do you wrong is that the system itself within it is laced with wrong. So therefore, if you follow the system, you can't help but be wrong in it. You have to step back away from the system and look at it and see how it has been laced with harm to a people. Um, and that's, that's systemic. That, that everything that you touch and taste, and it's like Matrix. I don't know if you ever seen the movie Matrix. Yeah. Okay, the, the, the system is a, is a matrix. And the system is laced with, with the lie of the enemy, whereas any human is better and greater or more important than another human. Um, it, is, it is wired that way. And so um, when you come into it, you can't help but fall into place because it's not you. It's not a, it's not a, a child that's born that says, you know what, or as they grow up decide, I'm going to hate somebody. It's a system that perpetuates a, a separation and a, and a hierarchy and a, and a better than, lesser than uh, perspective that kind of just takes over. And also it is those who have been grown up in it, not having been renewed in their mind that also perpetuate the system. You know, people talk to me and say, you know, um, Obama, when, and, and, and again, people assume that I'm, a, I'm, I'm, an Obama fan because I'm black, you know, which is part of the systemic racism. All right. right. Um, so they assume because of your skin color that they know how you feel, what you think, what you know, that kind of thing. Um, but pe people say to me, you know, when it, it, it's because of Obama that all this racism came into being. I mean, we, everybody was, everything was going fine until Obama became president. What they miss is that it was it was Obama that became president that showed forth that there was a that there was a, a, a racism that was asleep, that was dormant. It was always there. And what happened was that when the the epitome of what is is considered um, a no no in America, a black man leading, a black man in leadership, when that happened. All the, all the demons of dormant racism woke up because they didn't realize that their children were going to put a black man in office. Because really, it's the, it's the young millennials, white millennials, that put Obama in office. We, he couldn't get there without him. And, he, and, and they put him there twice. So the, the, the hope of the country is in the young millennials that are not necessarily as laced as their parents or grandparents. But when that occurred, it made what was dormant rise up. And, and, and so now the atmosphere is plagued with what was dormant. But what was dormant always existed. The system always existed. Um, and so now we find ourselves in an atmosphere where not, it, not only is it existing, but it is promoted. It is almost made um, viable again. Um, 
what's happening in the streets is because it has become once again a, a, a breathable, okay atmosphere in this life that we thought was gone. And the reason why we thought it was gone is that it was in the system, but it was not necessarily promoted in the people. We just lived, lived it out on an everyday basis. And while we were living it out on an everyday basis, we woke up one day and realized that there were younger people growing up that, was, that were not necessarily indoctrinated by the system and that they were intermarrying and they were you know, seeing everything was being changed. And then here they go doing the unthinkable, the, the, the forbidden. And then all of a sudden, all the old heads woke back up and said, we can't have this. You probably heard this term quite a bit thrown around, especially in the last few months. But when you hear the term sy systemic racism, what, what are your thoughts? Or what comes to mind? What, what are your understandings about it? So my current thoughts on that are very different than my thoughts were just even a few years ago. Um, I will tell you that um, you know, my thoughts before were something to the effect of that, you know, everybody in this country at this point kind of has equal rights and equal opportunity and all that type of stuff. And uh, systemic racism is, is kind of an excuse uh, for people that didn't, that that uh, didn't take advantage of those opportunities or weren't willing to work hard enough for those opportunities and those type of things. Uh, over the last few years, as, I've, uh, as God's kind of prepared my heart for, for this project, and I've begun to kind of, I guess, become better at looking at things from other people's perspective, I, I now see that... Um, there are still some, uh, there's still a lot of opportunity for, uh, for improvement uh, in our country and the way that we, that we treat people. And, and systemic racism is basically just the people, it's not so much the system itself, it's the people within the system, in my opinion, that don't necessarily uh, apply the rules and laws evenly they allow their own uh, biases and prejudices to, uh, to come into them.